Oh shit, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing out there? This is Intergalactic Interviews, and this is episode 142. How you doing, folks? Did you have a good week? I had a medium fucking week, but it's actually just picked right the fuck up. Yes, son. How you doing out there? Are things good? I'm having a good time. I'm sitting here with Seamart, as always, on the boards, and across from us is, uh, I'm gonna make up a bunch of amazing, uh, crazy adjectives right now. This is what happens You're gonna when make you make up adjectives. This is what happens when you do two episodes within four weeks. You like feel like you haven't been to the gym for a while. That's what it feels like. So I'm just, I'm gonna come up with some adjectives right now that make sense. Uh, I'm well, here you with say the magicatives. Ma- <laughs> magicatives, yes. Okay, so here we have the illuminative, <laughs> the uh, illustrious, the uh, the luscious. Oh, and that is uh, true from my perspective here. Yes, I, absolutely, it, really, definitely. Thanks. Uh, the Vidal Sassoonist, <laughs> the amazing Nat Jack of Lucid Afterlife. You didn't make up amazing, brother. Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt that's like low. That's well, low. So it's I'm good, gonna, though. I'm it gonna, has been used enough. You know, I'm going to sure. take credit for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. Yeah. How you doing, bro? I'm doing really good. How you doing? How was your day today? My day has been, it's been a me day today. Really? Yeah, it's been one of those me days. Would you go to the face spa there? Uh, the face, but no, I got some needles stuck into my arm. Needles, yeah, mm. some vaccinations. Oh, not a, safe, not a safe space. Not for, a safe uh, space. Not a safe <laughs> injection site. No, no, not okay. that. Very, that kind. Very forward-thinking day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. We're moving forward. And Absolutely. Then, uh, Played some UFC on the Xbox. Sweet oh, UFC oh, one yeah. or two? No, no, the newest one. The two. Oh, so that is two. two. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't consider that two because there's been so many from the PlayStation one onto this That's point. That's right. One. So the it's undisputed, not two. The undisputed series is yeah. badass. Well, I mean, it's totally different yeah. studios now. Totally. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. The uh, oh, shout out to Jazz over at EA. Actually, here's my boy working on the EA or the uh, UFC series over there. But um, the the I got to tell you, my heart lies with. Undisputed. That is a cr- crazy. You preferred that version. I do. Undisputed three, in my opinion, it's is the weird developer. Best MMA game that's ever been made. It was really good. Hmm. MMA yeah. for the Xbox 360. Oh, the actual MMA. That one. Oh, weird. Had some really interesting stand-up play. That, that one I was did some neat mechanics. Unlicensed, neat mechanics. right? Like there, it were was it Bellator or something? They had a lot of Strike Force guys. I see. And then I think they have anyone who else got kicked out of the UFC for doing drugs or punching hookers or whatever. Mm-hmm. They were in that game as well. Paul Daly. Paul Daly. He wasn't around that. <laughs> no, he okay, would be okay, if they did yeah. another one. He would be on the cover. <laughs> Fair Fucking enough. Semtex, bro. I always miss <laughs> Paul Daly. I loved him, man. He's so good. He looked like P.K. Subban. As well, he was a, he was a fucking hard. I wish he didn't. Pu- I striker. wish Paul Daly stuck around. He didn't need to punch him outside of the match but check was a prick though oh yeah and i, I first of all i stand by his people actions that, not that by don't know, uh, <laughs> you know yeah people that don't know what we're talking about uh josh koscheck welterweight was uh wrestling another uh welterweight in an mma fight and had him on the ground considerably for like three rounds paul daly is a striker couldn't do anything and all you saw was Koscheck talking to him all the time, like an inch from his ear. And no one to this day knows what he was saying. But I, it was so inflammatory that at the end of the fight, we're talking like 30 seconds after the bell, Paul Daly just gets up and cracks him in the fucking face. And uh, yeah. it had to be broken up by, I think it was Herb Dean or John, Big John McCarthy. It's pretty wild. But the idea that... Uh, you can't you, do that. You can't do no, that you ever. Can't like, do that. Dana White was like, I don't care if he's the best welterweight ever in the future. He's never fighting in this organization again. And then Strike Force was like, I'll have him yeah. right away. <laughs> like, well, Dana White known for standing by his fucking word. statements. Yeah, no yeah. shit. We're never going to have women's MMA. <laughs> Just champions Ronda like right after. Like, <laughs> so crazy. Anyway. You know what? Uh, there's a lot of great shit going on. But I'm curious as to why you stuck needles in your body today. I'm going to Vietnam tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, Jesus, and uh, my my best friend, he's actually getting married in Vietnam, and he says, "Oh, we don't, we don't get married. We don't ever do that. We never do that." So for the longest time, I said, "Okay, I'll stick with you know the customary, never do that with with the vaccines." But then, should asked, probably do that. Yeah, I asked a friend of mine, and he, <laughs> and, he and he got his. So I got I got one for typhoid tetanus. Yes, that's a good one to get. To, you know, you don't want. Yeah, I'm anti typhoid. <laughs> So you just got them today, and, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pro. You should pro typhoid. Actually, I, I, this, is a, this is a safe space. This is a. I mean it. Like they do, I think have a bit of a, and I could be wrong, but I think they take a little while to come into effect. They take so about you, ten days. So you should kind of be on guard a little bit. I'm a gambling man. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, I, I got my, my shots the day before I called yeah. every place. Like, you know, you, what do you, we, there's obviously no space for you. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll fit you in just because you know, like. 
we feel bad for you. You're, you're, you're talking to rock and roll God, <laughs> a.k.a. the son of God, a.k.a. <laughs> Jesus Rock over here, fucking Nat Jack. Uh, I, I showed a photo of you to someone before the show, and they were like, Jesus literally and i was like i was like he's fucking great he has a great energy yeah he's amazing i, I really like him yeah he has <laughs> hearts for surrounded by thorns and has flames shooting out the top. yeah he's amazing he should... yeah, like and become the son of god i was like wow that's that's an amazing accolade that's pretty that's pretty good uh i gotta tell you it may or may not be irresponsible for you to fly to vietnam within you know 12 no, hours of doing this show like you just oh. like shouldn't you be packing and yeah ready? i haven't packed yet i got i actually have a I have a lot of work to do. I have to edit for a video <laughs> for a lo- local band. I'm making their music video and I'll directing pack. Or producing I- I'm it. directing it and producing it. I'm doing way too much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish all that up. But I got a great team, uh, a teammate. I work, I'm working with Dale Vila Juan from uh, Seven On It Productions. And uh, we're going to be doing the, the post together. So that's going to help. So I'm going to do all the sequencing tonight and he'll do all the After Effects. And Dude, what are you planning to just red eye this? Go in on the like, just no sleep, sleep on the no, plane. No, well, I gotta, you know, I think I'm gonna just like get the hot tub rolling, and, uh, maybe do some LSD, <laughs> have the laptop, and then jump on a plane. Yeah, well, you know, like a rubber glove. What's the timeline here? Like, when are you? Leaving? Yeah, I was like, well, you I, may... it's actually two o'clock in the morning of the Wednesday. That's when I'm oh, leaving. Okay. So I got tomorrow okay, all day, okay. like literally if you all said day. Tomorrow, tomorrow, like, I was like, dude, you need to fucking. You got to go now. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I was like, this might be like a 10-minute episode. Like, you know, it's cool, man. Like, I never, I, never, I never pressure myself when I'm working. Fair enough. And I never ever found myself doing any sort of like creative work where mm-hmm. I have the footage or I already have a vision. It's just about going through all that. Okay, yeah, I knew you were there and swap it. And, and totally. You know, spank it in the butt and tell it to go home. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you have a great attitude with that stuff. Thank How you. did you gather such an incredible view on things? It's uh, having a... Um, when I met you, it, we were incredibly different people. Yeah, I guess so. When did we meet? I would say, I think it was about 2006. Okay, 2006. I don't remember a lot about my life. So <laughs> but what, what, what was, what's different now? Here's what I remember. I remember meeting you in a uh, house cipher. Mm-hmm. And for those of you at home that are not hippity hop inclined, I was at a, I was like basically a circle of people that were rapping. And... Uh, I knew some of them. I didn't know others. And you stepped up. I met you and several members of your family that that day. And uh, I was I was just like immediately like, yo, I like this guy. I like Nat. He's got dope energy. Always. I always felt like that. And I think James Hooper introduced us. Okay. Yeah, I believe mm-hmm. I believe that. So. And James Hooper and I used to have a production uh, company uh, called Partnered. Yeah. Media. And uh, yeah, we we're very very stoked on on that. And and the, and you know when he moved and then, you know, now he's moved back. It's been nice to reconnect with him. And, uh, I can't help but think of him when I, when I hang out with you, I, I really do. Cause I think about that. Like, he's, he's a great guy. I love that's our kind of, and he's a genius yeah. producer, a great, uh, so great uh, engineer with the sound. Is one of my to catch favorite sound, so. engineers ever, man. We were actually talking, I was talking to uh, James about maybe getting into some rock and roll stuff and doing some things with losing yeah. afterlife. And, I've uh, always wondered why he never went in that direction. We had many talks, many, many late nights over many drinks of, uh, you know, branching into different genres and doing things. And Being just, an artist, you never know. I, I never expected to be in a rock band. I never grew up as a kid being, I want to be like Freddie Mercury or I want to be like Slayer yeah. or, or any of that. I wanted to be a rapper. I was trying to be like the Foo Schnickens and the Wu-Tang. Time I met you. I was like, I was like, you dude know. was, I remember there was a book being passed around or something like that. And it was like, rap, whatever word you like put your finger on in the book oh right? yeah, like yeah flipping through the dictionary and stuff i remember that like really crazy stories like that and just really continuing on having like a good cypher good flow like that it's enjoyable you know the the cool thing about your transformation right now is i would say for the last since you've been with lucid afterlife since starting that and and exploring that aspect of music the resounding opinion I have heard from people is just how blown away they are and how natural you are hmm. as a showman. Like I, first time I saw you perform with Lucid Afterlife, I think you were opening for Mocha only. I think that was the first time I like really like captured, like sat, like stood stood in the audience and actually got to watch and like really captured it. And I was blown away, man. Seriously, it was like your. You're this is like captivating energy. People talk about stage presence a lot. They they don't they don't consider things like what you're doing up there. Like you, you have stage presence. You're, you. you're, uh, 
the natural order of the eye is to draw towards your section of the stage. That's what I'm talking about. Natural frontmen, natural stage leaders. Like it's a, it's an amazing skill. Not many people have it. Some people are like really great singers. Some people mm-hmm. are like great showmen. Some people have amazing stage presence. Very rare to have all three, and, and you do do that so well. I'm very impressed with that. Thank you. It's awesome, man. Yeah, and I'm super stoked on everything you're building, dude. I really am. And you're traveling like a motherfucker. Yeah, getting out there. What is prompting this wanderlust? You know, I kind of just go with the flow. My intuition. I really follow my heart, my intuition. Sometimes I get stuck in the, in, in the middle of two decisions, and I'm kind of like, what am I going to do? But eventually I just pick the one that's the wildest, and I go from there. <laughs> just yeah, like... It works out. This is going to be the most risk-based decision like that it's not about risk it's about like i remember before i went to mexico city i had the assumption that i was going to be you know kidnapped or whatever because i'm you know we all suffer from a certain amount of brainwashed that was my first thought right there and you know i was in the in tapito which is the toughest neighborhood in mexico city and i was drinking uh, polke which is you know a drink locally down there and i was hammered laying on the ground you know (laughs) guys doing pcp next to me and i said you know what there ain't nothing to be scared of is the cam on on Nat right now? Yeah. Oh yeah. I just for our viewers that are watching this right now, like if you could just look at Nat for a second, <laughs> like there may be a reason why you were okay in that particular burrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> burrow. <laughs> like you look. Uh, oh, I, I don't mean burrow like donkey. I mean like uh, neighborhood, like like a burrow. See, sí, ahora hablo algo español también. You know, I picked up some Spanish while I was down there. You got really? it. You get by, yeah. I'm just saying you bear a resemblance, like you like you have. Well, actually, I had to. I had. I, yeah, well, I, I know my, you're my Italian. Dad, my dad's black, right? Yeah, I know. Well, I so know that. He's, yeah, he's yeah, Caribbean, yeah, but, like, but you know, I, I was been at the beach, and a lot of it has to do with my new video, which is an animated video. And the animator, he put me because in the picture that you were showing me earlier, yeah, is I'm I'm tanned. You know, I get tanned super fast, and. At the time, I'm like, oh man, he he made me really tanned in this video. <laughs> I got <laughs> saturation I, I, up. <laughs> yeah, no, like legitimately for for yeah, my yeah, career, yeah. I have to go to the beach at least a sure, <laughs> week yeah. straight and catch up to my <laughs> animated version of myself. So that's kind of what happened. But that's yeah, right, yeah. But if, for, for anyone, I think it's the vibe you put out there and totally. Uh, yeah, it's energy wise. I'm, I'm just it's, it's I'm all just breaking balls. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just whatever. But like the idea that you're. You're just kind of like headstrong in this idea that everything's going to work out. Mm. That mentality. Where does that come from? That's not like a natural mentality. I wish it was, but it's not. So I'm, ex- I'm curious to explore that. Like, where does that come from? DMT. <laughs> you came to the right place, sir. Okay, I don't know if it came from DMT, but when you say everything's going to be all right, it takes mm-hmm. me back to uh, an experience which was uh, prompted by DMT. And I had a whole... I'm I won't get into so, it too no, much. I am so interested in this. But Please. at the very end of this trip... Uh, and it was a very severe and, and difficult trip. There was just a voice and it said, everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. So after this whole turmoil. So I kind of feel like, you know, like, I almost feel like I'm immortal. Wow. Like I can, nothing I'm can, feeling I don't 22. feel anything can stop me. <laughs> it's a Taylor Swift song, I believe. Oh yeah, I feel like I'm Taylor <laughs> Swift, you know. <laughs> nice. You became a living meme. Immortal <laughs> rock <means>. god, <laughs> Nat Jack. I love it. Big fan. Please continue. Please, I'm, yeah. I'm super into this. And uh, but but that aside is the having that attitude and why I have that is meditation. I think helps that too. Letting go. How many of times fears. a day do you meditate? Uh, I so sometimes I do like two hours a day. Two hours when a I'm day. on my game. Wow. Yeah, when I'm on my game. And there's a vipassana center here in uh, down by West Broadway. If you're a student of Goenka Vipassana, you can go there anytime and you can hang out there and they'll do a session. Do you have to have like a card? You have to just be an old student of Goenka. And he they teach around the world. They have one here in Merritt. They have a center in Victoria, I believe. When did you get into that. Goenka? How did no I get one, into Vipassana? I don't think, if, I would say that on average, the people listening don't know what that is. Yeah, I, well, and well, I don't, well, I don't actually know what that is. Well, actually. I would highly recommend to, to anyone listening right now is uh, check out a documentary on YouTube. It's called Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. And it's a, it's a documentary about uh, the prisons in India mm. and how they, all these people, were they're murderers and they're just, they're just acting crazy. Mm-hmm. And they gave them Vipassana. They taught them Vipassana and, the, and it just the peacefulness and the calmness and the prisons just really changed. So Is it like a philosophy or is it's it? A, it's a technique. 
Oh, okay. You know, like a meditation. It's 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 it's, it's, it's like straight up a technique. You know, the Siddhartha Buddha Siddhartha. Yeah. He's the guy who taught this. So before people started uh, attributing particular um, traditions or cultures onto the onto the what we call Buddhism, there was this dude who was just like, "Hey, man, I'm going to teach you a technique, like a martial art, yeah. or mm-hmm. like a yoga." Yeah. And vipassana is those is uh, mm. anapana, uh, and the two other techniques that uh, allow you to actually experience reality so it's not about it's not about thinking about reality Hmm. or rationalizing about reality but experiencing scientifically experiencing reality and goenka is a teacher who really kind of brought this this, you know to the mains to the west and got people sure yeah you know because before they used to do like you got to do like 30 days and you got to go in a little cell and you know, wow, that ain't going to happen in Canada. <laughs> I don't think that's, you know, so he brought it. He's like, okay, let's make dude 10 days and, you know, we won't put them in cells and, hmm. you know, wow, changed it up. So what, what was your first experience with uh, Goenka then? When was My that? first experience was out in Onalaska, Washington. I did a 10 day silent meditation. Um, so you just meditate, you do 10 days straight and you, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have but no, no talking. It's one of the, like, a, like a, not a, it's a retreat, right? It's a retreat. Yeah. So if you have a, like a question and you want to talk to your teacher or the guides or you can talk to them after yeah. or in the science, but you don't talk to any of the students. You don't, you know, personally out of respect, I don't even look at mm-hmm. it because this is about going into your own self. It's there. personal development. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's far out. I recommend it to anyone who's kind of seeking. Uh, there's a bunch. Of, I don't know about a bunch, but I've, I've heard of like a few. I don't know if they're similar in the, the long or like the wider scope, but like people that, yeah, they go to like, yeah, silent. There's no... Yeah. Yeah, like silent like, retreats. And yeah, like exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah, I've That's heard about those. They're probably not up my alley very much. I'd have a hard time. I'd have a very hard time. <laughs> well, I don't think it's easy yeah. Me. Which um, it, like when does it get tough? Like day two, you're probably like, okay. Uh, but like day nine, you're like, okay. What the, maybe day nine, you're already like the. Uh, yeah. Like it's, a, it's up the, and down. It's up and down because you really, it's like peeling an onion and you get to, how often do you go four days without talking to yourself? And you hear some of the things that you say and you're like, Dude, like, what did you say? Or did you say that? And you realize that you've been saying those things to yourself all the time and you don't even catch it. And you're listening to it. And you're like, wait a minute. You're just not going to listen to that. Or it's just because it's not, it's not about stopping any of this right. sensation. It's about simply observing it and mm. becoming just okay with it. Hmm. I've been discovering that the reason why I'm so extroverted and talk all the time and always have to have something playing or like watching or something like that is because the moment it's like quiet everything in my head just rolls Mm. way too hard and i just have to be like oh okay that's why i get it now because everything in my head is just like a little too negative at times and i have to uh, like drown it out seriously like it, it it's i'm learning the last two weeks have been pretty tough they've been really tough i've had some really fucking hard times the last two weeks and I've just been kind of rolling with it trying my best roll with the punches and then I had some great conversations this weekend that kind of like pulled me out of it Mm -hmm. and I was in studio last night uh, or yesterday actually most of yesterday and uh, I was in studio with Mizzy and we're doing his new record and I kind of had it was almost like reverse amnesia Mm -hmm. like suddenly I just remembered all these aspects about myself and I was like oh yeah it's like you just forget like you're this person who can achieve and, and do these different things. Like you just start to forget bits and pieces of yourself along the way because like whatever's in your head is telling you that you're not capable of doing so. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just like you're picking away at the, the temple. You're just pulling stones away from this temple <laughs> one by one. And suddenly someone's like, is that even a temple anymore? And you're like, yes, it is. I have the blueprint. And then you start putting the stones back together. That's what I feel like. I feel mm-hmm. like the last two weeks have been like that. And then just today... Was I, I woke up and I was like, okay, yeah, actually, I feel good. Everything's quiet <laughs> in my head. Everything's quiet for a little bit. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. I think I was, everything's gonna be fine. So when I hear you talking about going to like retreats of like silent, ten day mega uh, commitments like that, mm-hmm. in my head, first thing is just like, oh, you couldn't do that. You couldn't <laughs> do that. But then like I hear, I hear how coherent and and perfectly eloquent you are speaking about it and i think like man those are like amazing byproducts of someone who has incredible focus so would you attribute your mindfulness your mental well-being to things actions like that like taking taking steps for yourself when you say like today you started off by saying today was a me day Mm -hmm. like the way you start off like that this would always be incorporated into a me day something like meditation 
I try to do meditation all the time. Even all if the I'm time. working, there's a way to, you know, be be aware, being aware of uh, of sensation, of what's going on. And by sensation, I mean that by any particular phenomena that you can be observed by right. experience, not just, you know, uh, you know, what you feel with your fingers, but anything. Because mm-hmm. uh, sensations for some individuals are much more higher for than, right. than yeah. for, for others, you yeah. know. And so it's about uh, taking it taking it you know i'm a very uh, energetic person and a very vibrant person and sometimes i'm not even aware of how of how vibrant i am but when i allow it to just stop like right now just take three seconds from this moment in this interview it's fucking dead air. stop yeah and, <laughs> and they're like Fine. my panic just because i'm like yeah, well, dead air. Dead air. yeah but that dead air to me is just oh yeah you know because you enjoy it because you're actually like living it it's a reset what did you call it? There was a word you used back there about living, like experiencing, not... I don't know. Back when we were talking, what was the name of the uh, the the program you did in Washington? What was Vipassana. The right. And then, is that what is uh, living in the moment? Is that is that... that uh, Vipassana is the technique. The technique. I think living living in the moment is, is uh, you know, the technique can help you do that. Right. Living in the moment mm-hmm. is you really being in the moment, not worrying about yesterday, not worrying about tomorrow like I, I teach lucid dreams and i teach about out of body yeah i was going to ask you about the a talk you gave recently yeah yeah right. and that well i'm going to this now because one of the biggest reasons we don't remember our dreams in the morning because the minute we wake up we're like oh i gotta get groceries i gotta go to this doctor's appointment you don't think about that aspect of your reality you've already uh attributed uh, non-importance to the dream state and you've immediately started thinking about the day and that's why you didn't remember because you're not giving it attention. Like you're not even right away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. So because, because your musical group is called Lucid Afterlife and you give speeches and discussions and, and talks on lucid dreaming, maybe you could just share a little bit with us some technique yeah. that you would recommend. Yeah. Um, what are some benefits, first of all, of, of, of lucid dreaming? Some immediate benefits. Someone listening right now, they'd be like, I've never heard of this term. I don't know what's going on. What is Well, benefits? lucid dreaming is when you are in a dream, but you are aware that you're dreaming. Now, being aware that you're dreaming gives you the ability to take that uh, infinite possibility that dreams have and use your own imagination to do whatever you like. So you can travel to any planet, see any person, talk to Gandhi. I've spoken with Gandhi. I've played, I practiced my guitar on the moon with Jimi Hendrix. You know, he's, <laughs> he, he'll teach you. You know, he's there. You know, whatever you attribute the f- phenomenon to is up to you, but you ha- can have these experiences. Most people would say that. I would laugh and be like, you're so full of shit. <laughs> but I 100% believe you. <laughs> like, I, I absolutely believe that you've done this in your dreams. Well, there right? is no moon, unfortunately, because the earth is flat. But Here yeah, we go. We got a flat <laughs> earth <laughs> See, but you can use your imagination to make the earth <laughs> spherical. Yeah, 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 no, it's true. Can we just drop the confetti it. real quick for our 500 <laughs> flat earth reference? I love it. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Sorry. No, let's go. Okay, please, go ahead. Please. So with this infinite reality and, and possibility with your dreaming, mm-hmm. What is a what is a technique someone can do to harness a power like that? Okay, well, I would say anyone listening to this right now, take a look at your hand. Just look at the palm of your hand. Okay. Yeah, do that yourself. I'm looking at my hands right now. And now tonight, while you're sleeping and you're dreaming, look at your hand. Oh, and fuck. you're going to realize you're dreaming. And you can at that point, you can do whatever you want. So That's con- the first thing I tell any, anybody. Really? So just consciously examine your hands, recognize look them. Look at your hands right now. Recognize them. Okay. Tell yourself... I'm going to look at my hands in my dream tonight. Okay. And when you get there tonight in your dream, you're going to look at your hands and be like, whoa, that dude was right. I'm looking at my hands. And then you're going to fly to uh, hang out with Jimi Hendrix or whoever you want. Jesus. From that point on. I show up. It's your sound check. I'm like, is it cool if I like just hang out for a bit? Like, no. <laughs> no. Get in line. Like, fuck. Yeah. He's I like, waited. dude, what the fuck? I'm like, this is my dream, man. And you're like, dude, this is, uh, it's, it's everyone's dream now. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty cool. Is it? Um, is it something that you would say is rather easy? Like it's easy. Anybody can do it. Really? Yeah. It's anybody can do it. I feel like uh, I've definitely experienced um, uh, like the ability to lucid dream, not with any kind of technique per se, but sometimes you can kind of something seems absurd, and you're like, hmm, hold on. Oh yeah, we're definitely dreaming right now. That's you know what I mean. And then you can kind of move through it. Like, like you know, I don't know if I have any specific technique. I'm not. I just, you can sometimes, in my experience, feel it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it is interesting. You can definitely, but I find, how do you harness it for any long, I find it's normally when I'm about to wake up or mm -hmm. I'm in that, like, I'm not in like a deep sleep. It's kind of like in one of those like daydreamy moments where I know I'm dreaming, but I also know that I am like, you're like having just a thin you're having film psychosomatic of phenomena. I could that's wake up. Yeah, yes. oh, okay, is that, is that different then? That's what the scientists would call it. A psychosomatic oh, sure. because it's psychosomatic <laughs> phenomena. <laughs> and that's actually this morning. This okay. morning I was in a dream and I thought, man, I didn't know I was in a dream, right? Mm. Because it's foolish. I'm like, I've been doing too much LSD because I'm <laughs> I'm awake and I'm that seeing happens. like the Dumbo footage when Dumbo starts to get drunk and like this. Yeah, I'm yeah, like. Yeah. I like barrels the, of ale, the pink yeah, elephant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and luckily my meditation got me totally chill in that moment. It's like it's okay, Nat. You're just expanded. Get used to it. But I found out at this moment I was you're just expanded. dreaming. I, fucking, I love, I love the. But actually, yeah. This, so and, and and when you're having this type of phenomena go on and you're aware, that's when there's certain techniques you can practice at home uh, every day. Like a wig, I was telling a guy out here in Float House mm -hmm. uh, to wiggle your phantom body while you're in the float. This is a great place to practice your. Uh, out of body techniques is while you yeah. float. Mm. Hell yeah! While you float, and uh, so you can wiggle your phantom body. You can take advantage of those uh, of those psychosomatic visions, those apparitions. Those they're not hallucinations; they're, they're real. Mm -hmm. But you can take advantage of those, and you can use those to separate. The scientists call it REM sleep. Mm -hmm. That's rapid That's eye like movement deep sleep. sleep though, right? No, deep sleep is when you are when you first go to sleep. You, you see, imagine a graph and the graph is going down, down, down into a deep sleep. Mm. And to, to the scientists, because I don't agree with anything. Okay. But that's the scientists will tell you that that's deep sleep. And then as you come about four, four and a half hours after your first sleep, you come to a state where your, uh, your eyes are rapidly moving. Yeah. And that's where they tell you that dreams happen. Okay. So when you're in that, in that state, you can kind of woo, get it, mm -hmm. and go dream. Now, if you can actually time Say after six hours, that would, after six hours, that would approximately be your second REM stage. So mm -hmm. set your alarm for six hours or eight hours, depending on how many, how much time you have to sleep, and wake up at that time. And you're going to be tired. You're going to be groggy. Mm -hmm. And then as you go back to bed groggy, well, then you can start using techniques like wiggling your phantom body. Or the easiest one is just counting, keeping your conscious mind going while the counting. Yeah, count to say one. I'm going to lucid dream. Two. I'm going to lucid dream. Three. So that's whoa. interesting. So that's what I, I guess I'm whoa. describing is a sense that it's normally in the period where I've woken up, like you know, through whatever, or go to the bathroom, whatever it is, or my, and then. When I fall back to sleep, I never fall deeply asleep, mm -hmm. but I'm more likely to remember the dream I'm in or at least acknowledge that I'm in some dream state. Mm -hmm. um, but then I always feel like maybe I'm too aware in the sense that I know that I'm just like one degree removed. Like the dream, you can't go. It's like you don't have the full keys to the vault. You just have like a few of the keys. You can't, you, you can't go deep. You can't like. Let's look what it looks like to like take over the planet or like you can't go to crazy. <laughs> sorry. You can't go to like crazy lengths, but you can take it to some level. Some yeah. level I don't know. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe working at it more. Working like, at it. Confidence is yeah. key. Confidence okay. is key. Because this morning I'll tell you about my experiences. I, I rolled out of my body and I looked down and there's rolled my body. Rolled out of my body. I just love these. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if anyone else said That's that, awesome. I'd, be like, I'd be like, no way. But I know you and I know that this is so no, legit. Like, like, you know. Okay. Like, so please continue. Like, and I was actually, I sleep naked. At sure. the, today because it's I hot well, right who, now I sleep who naked doesn't sleep naked and I, I was like kind of embarrassed the boxers, but yeah fair I enough was, I looked right. down at my astral body I go oh, I'm naked I'm like and then I, I went to go get clothes I go wait a minute I'm, I'm in the astral realm I don't need clothes yeah. and you're constantly <laughs> going back and forth the you fucks know? people give in your dreams about your naked nature very low very low they don't no one cares no yeah. not at all in fact to the point that your body sometimes naturally sets yourself naked <laughs> yeah right? well, but, like, <laughs> you're in character select you're like oh I'm naked I guess. You're like, oh yeah I'll use that skin That's well you're cool. not actually your body another no, thing that I did right. oh, well first of all I, there's a door there and I'm like yeah I'm gonna walk through the door so I just walk, you know, you walk through the door Powerful and then I'm move. like, you know what? I want to be in Mexico. I'm just oh. going to close my eyes, wink and be in Mexico. So I winked, opened my eyes, wasn't in Mexico. So you can't, you know, that's I don't think I, you can I do guess everything. That's the experience. You can I'm try. Yeah. I kind of like, you have some, uh, you're like, Hey, let's try this. And then it doesn't work out the way you expect it to. And then you're kind of like, you're not in my experience. I'm not fully in control mm -hmm. usually. And then it'll normally like enter some sort of like, not a loop. But some sort of thing where I realize I'm like, I've hit a wall now and I'll just wake up. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know what uh, I mean. Where I can't kind of go further into it. Okay, but that is that's normal. When you okay. when you next time you're lucid dreaming or you're having this experience, rub your hands together. Mm. And the minute you do, in, it, like, in, rub, as a, rub your hands, as a and that'll practice. keep you. That'll deepen you. That'll make the state, the sensation. Mm. Take your body and rub your hands down your body. Grab a mug and rub the mug. Start touching things, and this will mm. make that reality that much Kinda more grounded. Real. Yeah, it'll really? solidify it. It'll really? solidify it. Yeah, so that's a classic, or is that like a typical technique to kind of, uh, yeah, kind of in, lock yourself in in some way by just like trying to like, double down on the experience? Some researchers call that deepening the the state or the phase. Hmm. You know, because uh, there's some researchers who don't uh, give it, they don't call it astral travel, they don't call it lucid dreaming, they just call it the phase, that way to yeah. keep the phenomena. I feel uh, like if I was a researcher, I wouldn't call it astral travel, yeah. but yeah. Well, you know, well, the, not that I disagree with you, it just I, sounds I just, very... I, I just call it, I call it what, I call it WTF, that's what I call it, because, you know, it's beyond anything that you can think, dude, you know, and it still expands, yeah, it's so, fascinating. Ast- you know, giving it a name limits it. So, weird, weird thing, what's your experience with, like, dreams, and maybe this is just my own fucking weird self, but, like, where I, I, I wake up, and then I'm, it feels like I'm waking up normally, and then something almost like sliders is off and you're like, hmm. And then sorry, sliders, the television show. Sliders. What I mean is that you're like, Hey, that door opened the other way and you realize that like whatever, but then like something normally it's negative, I guess. And that you realize like, Oh fuck, I didn't something catastrophic has happened. And you're like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. And then you realize, hold on, this is a dream. Like it a just murder. felt so real. And then I, I wake my, you kind of shake myself awake and then but I'm not awake. I'm like inception asleep still. Yeah, so I'm man. like, well, I'm awake now. And then I'm like, no, no, no. Shit is still fucked. I'm like, no, you got to get out further. False awakenings. And weirdly, False until awakening. you kind of, I felt like until I realized, I'm like, no, no, no. Wake up. I find <laughs> myself in this, like sometimes a loop. It's pretty rare, but it has happened. I don't know if you any. Oh, I've had that okay. all the time. And what's that? Uh, you what, know, what some people call that a false awakening. Okay. Your, your dream state. In alchemy, they call it, they have the moon, they have the sun, you know, and, and certain uh, esoteric, they have uh, pillars. So there's always a duality and there's always in the uh, the Nahuatl or the Toltec people of, of Mexico and, and, and Central America, they have the Nahual and they have the Tonal. Mm. And the Nahual is the sun aspect, the Tonal is the moon aspect. And when you fall asleep to them, the moon aspect rotates up, takes over your mind and the sun goes down. And then when you wake up, it's reversed. When you're having a lucid experience, that's when it's like, and you catch it both ways. You're it's like, like ha, yeah. nine o'clock, like, nope. three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. I'm Superman, bitch. And, you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and that, that's, that's not exactly how they would, the, the Toltec would explain it in that, that makes particular sense. words. Yeah. I, could, I could see you muttering on your, like laying on your pillow and be like, I'm Superman, bitch. And just like <laughs> make it like nine and three. Yeah, brother. I like that. Yeah. But to, to, to get into explaining your question is why that happens is in your dream, when you're dreaming, your dreams are your fem- coming from your feminine mind. And by feminine mind, I mean opposite of, of the masculine. This is the masculine mind. This is your mind that we're awake to now. It rationalizes, it controls things, it makes brackets, it makes mm-hmm. laws. But this is the feminine it mind. It runs faster. Yeah, this is the passive mind. It runs <laughs> this faster. Show, this is yeah. joking. <laughs> okay. that, was, that, was, that was Chris Red Pill Martin, ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, want to reach out to The him. email anyway. address is... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so, what, and, and so, so certain things that are bothering you and, and subconsciously yeah. that you don't really want to deal with, like you were saying, you're always, when you turn the music down and you turn everything down, all this stuff starts to surface. Yeah. Like almost, almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Well, when, immediately. when you're yeah. dreaming, it's, it's using archetype. It's using symbolism. It's really using visual poetry to say, Hey man, you really got to dump that girl, mm-hmm. you know, or Hey man, you really got to get off the meth. You're looking skinny, skinny. you know, or, or whatever the issues are. Or whatever are, the yeah. issues you've lost are. Enough weight, and it's and, and it's trying to do it in a way that won't offend you. Because the minute mm-hmm. you get offended, then what happens? You wake up and you block and you say, "I don't want to see this. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember totally. it." That's yeah. one reason why we don't remember it because we don't want to deal with what it's the moon mind or, or that part of our mind is trying to teach us and try to give us evolution towards to. Do do females? dream with a masculine mind state then no. there's a switch this so has nothing to do with sex no so all all dreams for all genders are see, all gender like, as a principle see it, it, if you look at it at a, a hermetic a, if you look yeah. hermetically have you heard of that concept yes. i won't get too into the deeper than that but gender is a principle it has nothing to do with your sexual organs or if you're male or female okay. the, the sexual organs are, are are used and explained through gender because of their particular attributes in regards to physical reality and how those 
um, correspond is the word I'll use, or you yeah. know, macrocosm, microscopicosm. If you're more in esoteric, es you know, the word that starts with e, then I can't say esoteric. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, <laughs> if you're into that, then you know that's what it's called. But whether you're male or female, you have no matter who you are, you have both sides of your mind. The uh, what you want to do with any sort of esoteric uh, uh, practice or any sort of meditation practice is to unite both of those sides uh, of your mind. If you're a very masculine person, what you want to do is start to appreciate your feminine side and come into equilibrium. If you're a very feminine individual, is you want to find your masculine side and come into equilibrium and appreciate that, and that's becoming whole. And that is, uh, you know, to get into another topic, or but but a relating top topic like alchemy or, or any sort of esoteric practice or any sort of yoga, mm -hmm. you know, um, is that's the overall one of the overall works that you'd like to work towards. You know, uh, I see some. Th this world is is completely overrun with with with, with masculinity. It's just ridiculous how, uh, in our waking state, you know, power power is the theme. There's no. There's no nurturing. We're in a we're in a matriarchal society, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a matriarchal society which doesn't appreciate the power and the the nurturing, the power of nurturing, the power of being passive, the power of being loving, uh, like some tribes in our in in our historic prehistoric not prehistoric but our historic past and not that far along they would they were matriarchal and these matriarchal tribes are, are tribes that uh, you know would would flourish. Uh, there are some tribes where uh, it wouldn't be it would be it would be patriarchal, but only the women could vote. Wow, you know. So this, this and, and that is that is that's an idea of how these two energies, which are both like yin and yang. Come yeah. on, yin and yang. You guys, you know, you guys have opened a fortune cookie. You're familiar somewhat with that. Is how working together harmoniously can actually kind of create the the supreme mentality. So it's not about being feminine. It's not about being masculine. It's about it's about uh, it's about the Tao. The, the Tao yeah. is, 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 is understanding the unification and the dance between yin and yang, masculine and feminine, sun and moon, and this duality, becoming into the magic number three, you know, at, at perfection. We need to cue up a sitar for the remainder of I this. Feel about, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like, I've sometimes heard, just, like, like... I felt it right there just for a second. It was like, it was like... <laughs> you got, yeah, exactly. Just, what was the name of that suitcase instrument? I don't know. No one ever found here. that Armonium. Out. Is that, that what it you is? Know what it, yeah, we oh, have that on a record. It. I love that you knew that. <laughs> it was more of a briefcase, <laughs> but yeah. I love that you knew that. Do you know how long I've been wondering <laughs> what the fuck yeah. that was? Like, of course, it's the harmonium. I, I, like, I love that you knew that It's a pretty that cool was. sound. It's so funny. I'm like, I'm like, it's like a suitcase, but it's kind of an accordion. You're like, oh, an harmonium. Of course. <laughs> and it, I bet you it was the key of B flat. I was like, yes, absolutely. Exactly <laughs> <laughs> but cute. so in this yin-yang kind of style, like what is, because uh, some of the Eastern philosophy kind of, goes down like the idea of the middle way mm -hmm. right where it's like you don't i guess maybe that's what your harmony that's what harmony means right you're kind of you're not either or you're kind of you're getting like, into it to looking at a philosophy aspect the middle way is if you have a way that means there's a destination and the middle way is a particular destination some people say there's the left hand path or the right hand, hand path, path. Or, or or any sort of a way <laughs> to getting to yeah so the middle path is from from my limited i'm 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 not a you know super you mm -hmm. know out there guy i know what i know i'm very limited i listen to a bunch of alan watts so that's my perspective on it he yeah. talks about the, the middle way a bunch yeah. fire on your right ice on the left mm -hmm. and you're right in the middle and John you're just Snow. like, I'm cool, man. I'm so cool. Yeah, right yeah. About this. You know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of like how I would see the middle way of getting okay. towards happiness, getting towards, you know, what, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever nirvana is to you. Yeah. I like that. I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying this. I hope you know I'm just taking the piss. I'm having, <laughs> I'm having a good time. I really actually do really, I'm super in intrigued by this. The first time I ever heard the concept of any kind of dream manipulation at all was reading books by Stuart Wilde way back like 2008 and 2009. And these books were like pretty predominant in the Alliance, all the Boomsday guys, we were kind of into it. And uh, Zenny, Zenny D. Wonderpants is the first guy to show me a book by Stuart Wilde. And he showed me this book and it was all about uh, being aware of perception. Like j just the number of times you take a route, say to like work or mm. school or, or something and He's like, how many trees are on that route? How many times have you done it? A hundred times? And he's like, do you even know how many lamp posts are between here and there? How many mailboxes? Like little questions like that. And you're like, I don't actually know. And it's like, you be aware of those things. So like to a heightened level, 
that it, when you actually care about something to be aware <laughs> of it, like being able to see danger around the corner, essentially, like you're, you're heightened, you're, you're training your senses to do that. It's like basically having being a secret service agent or like a, like a spy. Maybe. Yeah. Like, like a, K, <laughs> like a prime KGB agent, 71, 72. Like you mean Jason Bourne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jason Bourne. Yeah. Uh, before the third sequel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Bro. Okay. Um, yeah, but like just the idea that there's like this per- perception training you can do and mm-hmm. the idea that like most people are just staring at things like life through these little tiny pinholes, not realizing you have this whole peripheral that you mm-hmm. can utilize all the time. And it's like a muscle like any other. I'm, I brought up podcast earlier. Seriously, not doing the podcast for a couple of weeks. Like even though we've done two out of uh, four weeks, I when you do it weekly, you feel like you're in there every week. It's mm-hmm. it's like it's seriously. I, I compare it like to the gym. It's seriously like going to the gym. And if you miss a week, you're like, oh fuck, just feel like shit. You feel so bad. You, feel, you first of all, you let people down there listening and watching. But then also, you know, or like like anyone gives a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but like the, to the other side of it, though, you feel bad because like you're not you're not uh, expanding. You're not sharing. You're not you're not growing. And I, I know some podcasts are like you know they they don't do weekly. They do it whenever. And mm-hmm. that's a life I will never be able to experience because I signed up for this thing for a weekly for some fucking reason. Every time I talk to someone, I'm like, how often do you do your podcast? And they're, and they're always like, uh, when we feel like it, like when we have a good guest or something. And I'm like, what is that like? like and I was like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, we do like podcast Sundays where we'll record six or seven episodes in a row and then release them over the course of two months. And I'm like... What is that like? Like, I, we just <laughs> run you, on fumes. Uh, Nat, do you, <laughs> Nat, do you listen to podcasts or do you have any uh, yeah, they, like recurring media yeah. or like uh, kind of things well, that you kind of like look to? There for? is a, there's an individual, his name is Santos Bonacci. Santos Bonacci. And uh, I like to listen to his workshops. He does, he records them on YouTube and he does some podcast appearances. Mm. Oh, nice. Uh, very bright individual. And he uh, speaks a lot about astro theology. Mm. And that is the correlation of astrology and, and what people would call a theology and how it, 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 it's, it's relative. And I would, anyone who has a, a, a interested or a very curious mind about how we got to uh, the mind state we have today, I would definitely check out Santos Bonacci. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Can you recommend a particular guest uh, feature that he's done, like a certain podcast he's featured on? No. No, good. Just off the top. Because just I, I always know? type in uh, boom, 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 you know, and then. Top. Santos Bonacci, and then I just click oh, it. So you just type in boom, 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 so, boom. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, really yeah. Boom, Santos, boom, comma, semicolon, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the <laughs> keywords. You can't find like, it any other I'm way. I'm not sure it's, what you would find if you did that. So you got to really pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would love to it's meet. It's page 29 on Google. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would love to meet <laughs> Santos's SEO engineer. Just that's amazing. Boom, comma, boom. Yeah. yeah. Comma, He's yeah. a cool guy. I, I emailed yeah. him about a project because. Uh, uh, I am the album. I am those songs actually correlate to each song correlates to a particular uh, energy of the zodiac or astrological energy of that planet, and you'll even see the signs. Really? Of, yeah. If you see, on the, if you look at the back of the record, if you have a record, it's sold out now. But if you look at the back, it'll have the element next to the uh, the planet sign, uh, starting with Aries, which is I am. The song is Aries, the first sign. I am coming out banging. And so mm. even the energy and, and the rhythm and everything about that song has mm. like connected to that energy. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to take people on a trip. I want to take people on a trip of this, this, this cosmic energy and what it's like to be a, a star floating through space or be a, be a planet like Earth and mm. going through space Some musically. a celestial body. Yeah, like Absolute. a celestial track. It's, it's one of the things I tried to com- uh, compartmentalize. Mm. There's another big word I'm not good at, but in, into, yeah. into the album. That's pretty cool. I love that you like minor very minorly struggle with like one or two words but you're just fucking throwing like 25 dollar words out there like well i don't say like i'll like, tell you i don't have the opportunity to speak about this stuff very often usually i'm not speaking i'm you know usually rocking yelling at people out. on yeah. the stage you know? usually i'm rocking i'm yeah, like I grabbing my balls yelling you know so yeah. it's kind of nice to talk about something like else. i've never worn this many shirts in a long time. <laughs> I'm actually going to take this jacket off. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> We're going to start. Um, Rock on. So speaking of astral projections, maybe, should we talk about Float House? Oh, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, I assume you're... that Matt has floated oh, once yeah. or twice yeah, yeah. in his life. I love it. 
<laughs> yeah, you like float tanks, right? Highly recommend it. Well, let me tell you about a fantastic opportunity right now. If you're one of our listeners and you happen to be near a computer or holding a phone, you want to go ahead and check out floathouse.ca. Once you're there, you're going to be at the destination for the best float and isolation tank experience in the lower mainland. Now, why do I say that? It's because it's goddamn true. Mm-hmm. Asterix, because I don't know how I could prove that. So I'm going to just roll with this because it's an ad. <laughs> I'm going to keep going with this. Ladies and gentlemen, Float House is a pretty spectacular place. One of the best things about it that I love is the knowledgeable staff and all the resources that are available at your fingertips. As soon as you walk in, there's many, many warm and loving personalities that will absolutely take care of you. More than that, you get your own house coat, your own private shower, your own private tank, obviously. And you also get the benefit of knowing that you're going to spend the least amount of time in the best way. It's so cool. It's like a spa for your mind. It's fantastic. I float, Nat Jack floats, Seamart floats. We all float. You should float and try it out and check it out and go to floathouse.ca. Use our podcast promo code IIPODCAST and get yourself 20% off your next float. That's a goddamn good deal, folks. It's fantastic. And I think you should check Everyone it out. Everyone should just use it if you ever... Yeah, like I don't yeah. know why you wouldn't just use it. Like, Do you like 20%... More yeah, value. Like, like seriously, <laughs> the amount of people that are like, you know, I hate your show, but I do get twenty percent off all yeah. my floats. You could hate like, the show and still like, get twenty percent off. That's right. totally fine. Enjoy your float and think about making a better life choice when you're in there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, really push the podcast hard. Yeah, yeah, that's ad. a little intense. Yeah. yeah, like you're supposed to be promoting the float tank um, aspect, but like, like literally though, it's one of the best things ever. Mm-hmm. I, I had my first float experience was amazing. I had like three hours. It was fantastic. Back that's to not, back that's to unusual, though. That is very unusual. Usually, <laughs> usually people do about 45 minutes to 90 minutes for their first one. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like that, I was almost grateful that I, I didn't know that it's not usual to have that much time because I went in there and I, I thought it was only 45 minutes. I actually got out feeling guilty. I felt like I wasted a bunch of time. And when I checked my watch, I was like, holy fuck. So I experienced tank time, like literally just lost track of life. And... People were like, oh, did you fall asleep? Did you like, you know, nod off or something? No, absolutely not. I was 100% coherent to the point that I was actually like experiencing things from my childhood to the point. Like, I've talked about this on the show before, but I was like, my younger brother, my brother Brendan, the only one of my brothers not in a band. Brendonius. Uh, Brendonius. That's why our families are similar in that respect. (laughs) We have very artistic families. Uh, But Brendonius and I are only two years apart and we get along fantastic. I love that guy. But when we were like six or seven, I, I, I had a fight with him or something. I didn't even remember this till I got in the tank, but I fought with him because he had a jacket that I wanted or something. And I like beat him up hmm. and my classic ta- McDonald's. Yeah. Move. Till I'm like, give me that jacket. <laughs> so the, the tank time had me experience it from my point of view, then his point of view. And I like really experience it. And I felt it. I felt yeah. bad. I like got out of the, the tank and I, I felt bad that I was, I, I was like, oh, I only, I was only in there for 45 minutes. I wasted two and a half, three hours of this time, you know, and, and I got out and I was like, holy fuck. It was like so, so quick. It goes so quick when you don't have clocks around you. It's like Vegas. <laughs> People at home that don't know what it's, a little it's different, like. different, but yeah. Yeah, but, but like the way that they build that with no clocks around, no concept of time, there's no windows. So you don't understand that like when you're, you know, there's so many subtle uh, concepts of time that you don't even give thought to like right now I'm, we're we are sitting on uh the ground floor of a beautiful building here and this amazing window tells me that it's not quite noon obviously but it's closer to like 8 39 ish it's closer to that time of night but the, the sun's still out but you can tell that it's nighttime it's just these little subtle cues that like i'm not thinking about the time at all when i'm, when I'm talking to you but mm-hmm. like the idea that i know that time's passing just slightly when you're in this dark and tomb coffin it feels like for some people or you're on like a warcraft or world of warcraft raid or something maybe <laughs> no, no. is that your meditation no yeah. i'm just saying that people lose time like i've lost you're like what the fuck am i doing when you leave roy jenkins and you have yeah. a good time the the idea though that like there's just these little pieces of uh and components of your life that like are constantly pointing to how much time is passing yeah. when you remove them you're like whoa it's just yeah. this weird construct i lost an entire summer to diablo in yeah, high school. The original nice. Diablo? Yeah. I wonder, both one and two. But yeah, Diablo, both the, are the first one came yeah. out. I lost a summer. Yeah, absolutely. Where to go? I always, I always say, like, uh, <clears throat> Diablo 1 or Diablo 2 is an objectively better game. 
than Diablo 2. But Diablo 1 is just way more attitude and like and listen. demonic <laughs> influence and Grace weird Walsh. culty stuff. But I actually think that um, I I don't use video games meditatively because I don't mm-hmm. I don't I've never myself meditated. I don't ever. It seems difficult. I, I don't know. I've never like literally sat down and like really gave it a shot. It's a kind of intimidating. I feel like I would be lying to myself. I'm kind of a cynic. And so I feel like, I don't See, know if I would let myself get into the state that you're supposed space, to kind of get right, into. Yeah. But again, like, I have listened to a lot of, like, talks and philosophy and stuff like that whilst playing games that explain to me, like, that's, that's okay. Like, it's not about, mm-hmm. like, when you said earlier about the middle way being, like, a way with a destination, like, meditation or yoga is not intended to have, there's no purpose to it. It just simply is supposed to be, mm-hmm. like, it's a thing you do. So what what's stopping you from wanting to meditate? Oh, nothing's stopping me from wanting to. It's just that. Well, why not? Why not tonight? Uh, I got some magic. To <laughs> <play>. <laughs> no, but um, got some magic. No, but to like, gathering I don't know. Play. I don't. I guess it's just like um, I've never really. Uh, I've never given it a shot, mm-hmm. or given it a shot. Sorry. What if you never gave Magic the Gathering a shot? Yeah, you guys, you'd probably have a lot more question. money. Right? No, 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 no. That's no. a great question. Yeah, I would have a lot more money. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Answer good, that, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. It's a good. It's a great point. I consider it sometimes, and it's more like it's one of those things that you just gotta. Because you really enjoy playing Magic, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. The amount. But of... I like being mindful if I can. Mm-hmm. Right. I would think that, like, oftentimes the thing that you're just like, well, I don't know why I've never done that. The that's probably the thing you should do. Seriously, that's like the, what the I number when one you, thing. Earlier in the conversation, you say, "Why do you do the things you do?" And it's because I've never done that. Mm. You know, because I'm that makes scared. so much more sense now. I okay, always yeah. do the thing that's the scariest. You yes. know, yeah, not course. the most dangerous, yeah. but like what mm-hmm. scares me? Because I don't know why I'm scared. And once you do it, you get over it, and you kind of just expand, 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 mm-hmm. and then you be like, okay, you know, like that's when you become the immortal rock star that you talk nah. about. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think any I don't think I am a rock star. I don't think anyone else is uh, any different on this entire planet. I think we're equally stars. But it's just about let just do something you're scared of, like tiny. If you're just scared. Of using a part, uh, trying a particular food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Always just, do that. Just freaking try it, man. Just do you know, it. Have that blueberry pie. I know? love it, man. I love the idea of living at the tip of the spear. Like I like being able to be at the vanguard of 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 life, man. Like you want it when the when you feel the most alive is when you're trying things that are just like terrifying. Mm-hmm. Really, what, like out of, like people say, like out of your comfort zone. I mean, like way beyond that. I mean, like way, way beyond your like. I don't mean like one foot on land and one foot in the water. You're like, oh, this is out of my comfort zone. I mean, like way swimming out there where you're mm-hmm. just like, fuck it. Like I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work. You know, thinking that you are going to die is one of the most important experiences I think everyone should should have. Really feeling that you are going to die. How would you recommend this? Well, near there, death. there's different there's different ways to do it. It doesn't have to have a near death. I'll tell you about my mom who went who went through leukemia, and she, every day she tells me is vivid because she thought she was going to die, and so she appreciates it much wow. more. Is she okay now? Yeah, well, she's going through treatment. She had a um, stem cell surgery, so she's still on medication. What? She's coming over. She's cancer free. That's beautiful. Yeah, but you know she's so much more vivid. I'm not saying everyone oh you go and get cancer. No, of course not. No, of course not. But yeah. uh, that is something that happens to people. You know, uh, yeah. through through. Uh, uh, you know, it was life. Thing that yeah. life. Where, where did she get uh, stem cell surgery? Here in Vancouver. They do it here in Vancouver. Yeah, they have a they have a center here down uh, just on, on the west. Wow. Nice. Now is that only for uh, cancerous treatments? Like, is that it's uh, for lo- what they take is they take it's a cord cell because none of us in the family ha- could match and they couldn't find a match. I don't know if you remember. I was doing a lot of concerts trying to get people to come give blood. Yeah, of course. I was doing, yeah. I was like, oh, nice. You know. Give me your blood, I'll give you a show. <laughs> but we couldn't find a match. That's a there good was no match. Move. You know, the entire world, they do like a search entire, and there was no match. And so the hospital here, they said, okay, well, what we can do is we can take cells from um, umbilical cords, stem cells from the umbilical cords, and we can give you that. So they put her through, you know, chemo, radio, all this, hor- you know, horrible stuff just to kill everything in her body. And then once everything is dead, uh, these stem cells, they kind of start to taking over and they start regrow. They regrow. And eventually, yeah. because there's two sets or two different ones, one's going to take over the other. Mm. And so there's, there's cases where people get this procedure and their hair changes. And yeah. Certain mm. uh, faculties uh, about them will change because of that. Will you search real quick, uh, Seymour, speaking on this topic? I just read last week that uh, the first human 
like legitimate trials to cure diabetes are being conducted in California right now in America to use stem cells to, to cure diabetes hmm. type one. And I read that in the mindset of like, whoa, if that's happening in America, we're pretty close. We must be pretty close to being able to have that as like a, like a pretty standard treatment. Right. I mean, that's amazing that your, your mom was able to utilize that, but you, you hear about like, uh, people storing their children's umbilical yeah. cords now. DNA umbil- yeah, umbilical yeah. cords is where they get it. Yeah. Like it's, it's pretty common now, right? The idea that you can do that is, uh, pretty crazy. What is this? Is this the, yeah. Oh shit. We just read the headline, whatever. Uh, from like, uh, like seven days ago. This is on CMART's phone. It says first implants derived from stem cells to cure type one diabetes. Last week, two people with type 1 diabetes became the first to receive implants containing cells generated from embryonic stem cells to treat their condition. The hope is that when the blood sugar levels rise, the implants will release insulin to restore them to normal. Hmm. Now, that's pretty amazing. I'm sure it goes on in at it goes, length. <laughs> it, does, it does go on at length. Uh, I'll just... Uh, I'll that's look crazy, though. Bit. Like, Yeah. It does bug me when, when some people whoever like whatever your beliefs are i you know respect I mean, that but like when people are like down on there you go bro like research in that kind of way it mm-hmm. kind of feels like the whole that's kind of against the whole point of us ever inventing anything yeah it's kind of like hey we figured out some genetic shit too and you're like oh interesting that's why my uh, position is often anti-theist not atheist but like anti-theist like i just feel like all of it like on a Christopher Hitchens level where he's saying like it, it just poisons everything mm-hmm. because religion, organized religion is great for an individual organized religion is great for a community, but organized religion when it comes to making policy decisions on a government level for multiple faiths and denominations is like the worst possible influence ever because you have situations like your mother or this research we just read where that will just be thrown out the window because you have uh, a faith based uh, platform which is completely eliminating any uh, practicality for scientific advancement mm-hmm. it's really upsetting when i think about it and people are like how could you ever like have such a negative thing like all these you know the stereotypical like neck beard atheist stuff mm-hmm. there and all that kind of shit it's like no i'm not anything like that I, i'm just saying like i have no problem with anyone like my father is a pastor okay like mm-hmm. I, I have no problem with anyone practicing their own religion i just don't like when it affects policy that affects everyone. That's mm-hmm. it. Because the whole reason there's any issue over in the Middle East right now is because it's the other side of the coin in terms of Judeo-Christian values. It's Muslim values. And in Islamic values or Judeo-Christian values, whatever the predominant influence is on the government, that is what shapes their policy. And as you can see, there's never been a sitting atheist president There's ne- in, in America. There's never been a non uh, you know, radical type uh, uh, Shah, or I guess, what is it over in Iran? It's like mm-hmm. the Shah or, you know, any of the Imams or whatever. Like the idea that um, religion poisons everything, this idea that Christopher Hitchens was putting out there, I feel that, man. I feel that. If there was a situation where your mother wasn't able to get treatment for leukemia based on someone else's faith, how would you feel about that? This is a hypothetical Certainly, a massive uh, hypothetical. But to that scenario, what was your first reaction when you heard something like that? You know, I'll answer that question in a, in a more creative way because I'm someone who I believe in the alkaline, uh, an alkaline body. Well, it's not that I believe in it. It's, it's a Nobel guy won a Nobel Peace Prize for the the fact that if you have an alkaline body, if your bloodstream is alkaline, you cannot you cannot have cancer, you cannot have AIDS, you cannot have diabetes. This is something that Someone has proved, and not only proved, but got a world-recognized prize. But you're not seeing a whole lot of, um, not seeing a whole lot of uh, propagation ab- about this fact, or using this in, in, in treating or uh, curing any of these diseases. In fact, you're not even allowed to say that uh, chemotherapy or that stem cell uh, transplant is a cure. It's it's not it's not illegal. You're, it's illegal to say it's a cure. You're allowed to say it's a therapy because they can't actually prove it's not a cure. It's a it's a hypothesis. A it's a theory that this 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 does anything. It's it's a, you know some people die. Yeah. So uh, religion or science, it doesn't matter. Any individual 
who wants to take their particular stance on something and, and put that a stamp as what is real, yeah. like what is real. I find that just the way things are. Just to, that's life. You know, there, you're always going to have people, the people who seek power, the people who seek power are the people who are going to eventually have it. The people who seek peace, those are the people that are eventually going to have it. Now, there's particular individuals that we don't even have to name because we can recognize that they have certain power and they seeked power. And there's individuals who, who seeked peace and you don't even know who they are. And you, could, you might not even be able to recognize them, but they can be that homeless guy walking down the street. I know this doesn't answer your question, but this really brings it to uh, give you a, a feeling of how I feel about that when it comes to organized religion putting uh, their aspect and their beliefs on yeah. their decisions. For me, it doesn't matter because they cannot affect me. There's nothing anybody can do that will affect me that will change my happiness, but that will change the fact that I'm thankful, yeah. that I'm grateful to be here right now. And it's, my, it's, it's the fact that I'm thankful and it's the fact that I have gratitude that gives me my health, that gives me my vivification. And if for some reason I have cancer, for some reason I have some sort of illness, that's not gonna change me. They're not gonna tell me that, hey, they told my mom, hey, you know what, you're gonna die if you don't uh, do this religion, uh, prophet, whatever reason, they're telling her that. That's based on their science. And you, they didn't say that, oh, you have a, you, this plethora of options. They didn't say, oh, you can have an alkaline uh, body system. Or, hey, you know, there's this really thing going on in London with uh, oxygen therapy. You know, but you got to stick to our way of doing it. Because scientists and some of these doctors, they're just like rappers, man. They want to be number one. They want their research to get a platinum record. They want their research to be the one. They want to be that. They want to wear that big gold chain, that Nobel Prize, and they want to walk around with bling. They want to be respected. Not all of them. Not all of them. But you got to think. You got to look at scientists. What when you go learn any sort of science in university? What is what's the most important thing that you have to recognize? What's fifty percent of the questions? It's the goddamn names of these scientists and the names that they put on their theories, the names that they put on parts of your brain. You know, the Wernicke area, the part where information is processed. And then it goes, the Wernicke area? If there is a God, did he call it the Wernicke area of your <laughs> brain? No, some dude put a prod on it and called it. And it was a race. It's a goddamn race for these guys to, get, to put names on your body. That's a, that's a great point. That's an excellent point. You know, I... I gotta say, I fucking love your energy, man. I've, I, I, I've always loved hanging out with you and, and chatting with you, man. I seriously... Igualmente, feel, amigo. Igualmente. Always. I feel like there's so much I want to chat to you about, but I also feel like we're kind of coming on our time. Yeah, like real quick, eh? Um, should we talk music real quick? Yes, let's talk music. I we should music. probably talk music. I do that, by, Just, by, uh, by the way. way. <laughs> yeah, by the way. You're like, oh, by the way, yeah. I did extol virtues on you that you're an amazing vocalist, but for oh, what? Oh, the old mouth music. Mouth music. You do fantastic work. Uh, you're a great writer. You're, you're a great uh, singer. Uh, you're a great performer, just Thank in general. Uh, Lucid Afterlife, doing well. What is... You guys have had, you know, uh, quite a few successful Western Canadian tours. You've mm -hmm. worked with a lot of great talent. What's coming up right now? What's, what's going we on? We are uh, working on a new record. We have an amazing sponsor, uh, Tetra Technologies, who they do CBD, you know, uh, and they're backing us and, and they're helping us create some, uh, some major changes in, in music because it's, uh, we're having our sponsorship come from a different angle. We're working on uh, getting down to South America and Central America. We have a lot of following. So, hola. Uh, Mexico, Peru, gracias, Colombia, all my amigos in Chile, all the ones who, uh, who have been supporting the record, making positive posts, giving comments. We are working our way. We're really trying to get down to our fans down in there. So we're yeah. booking a tour right now in uh, South America. We're working with some uh, uh, promoters and so forth for, in Chile and getting on festivals. And you guys do that. really well down there. Like, it's pretty obvious. Well, like you said, I look like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the number one. No, and City of God, ladies and gentlemen. The, 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 there's so much soul around the world. There's so much beautiful uh, people. I feel that we got the opportunity to connect with Central and South America with our style of music. I think it just is it's, it's what they yeah. were ready for right now. Canada, we love playing in Canada and touring Canada, and we will be doing a tour of Canada. Uh, eventually, after we release our next album, we'll, be, we'll, we'll take that across Canada. But we're focusing 
on 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 our fans and our and the majority of our fans and we, we love you guys all in canada us england italy uh finland all you guys there you know thanks for buying our album but we want to get out to those people and 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 spread the love spread of the course vibe. yeah i think that'll be a huge corner to turn for the band i think you guys are going to experience growth exponentially it's going to be fantastic i seriously do and i, I think one one component that your music has really well defined is the fan interaction. Like you, like uh, we haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, I, I had the opportunity to do live sound for, uh, in recording and engineering the uh, live DVD, and you guys did that show was pretty close to sold out, right? Like what, how was it? Pretty... It was a big show. It was good. It was at, it was a large theater. It was, it was the a... Rickshaw Theater. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, which is good. a which is a big room. For for indie bands and it was fucking packed. In yeah, it was like, a good show. It had this amazing energy. There. I was behind the boards in like front of house that day, so I, I I didn't see a lot behind me, but everything was like shoulder to shoulder. Everyone, it was really packed, and the the reactions from the crowd. I mean, it's all on the DVD. You guys can go watch that. But like the the reality is like, dude, you guys connect so well with people. There's it's it's not just the music though. It's the energy. It's the image, it's the presentation, it's it's everything. I'm mm-hmm. not surprised that you know in South America they're connecting so hard to that at, at all. It's it's amazing. You guys do really well. Yeah, thanks, Can people still get the DVD out there? Is the DVD a- is it's sold out, but if you really want it, we can make we can definitely make one for you. I think that's almost two or three years coming now. I don't even know if I have a copy, bro. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> well, maybe we should do a new one. I think maybe you know. we should. Probably uh, you know, do actually that. coming to that, we're 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 on September 16th. <clears throat> we're playing a free concert. Uh, it's called Give Thanks Day. <clears throat> and an uh, amazing person, Coco Rosario, asked us to co-headline this event. And they're feeding uh, 1,000 to 1,500 homeless people here down at Victory Park. They're yeah, going to be giving haircuts. Here, a couple blocks right down here, and yeah. it's going to be an amazing event. It goes, it's during the day, <clears> so <throat> people look out for posters for that. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a live recording of that. Oh, shit. That'd yeah. be fun. I'd be interested. That'd be pretty cool. I like that. Um, yeah, dude. If people are interested in following you, how can they do so? You know, just get to Google Lucid Afterlife. Uh, take the techniques that I showed you about lucid dreaming and contact me. I'm always there, man. Like that's a much better way than just uh, you know following me on internet. <laughs> let's let's let, let's take yeah. this relationship beyond this yeah. lifetime. Let's really connect. Yeah, uh, but not you just know, loosely <laughs> quote me from a podcast I did. <laughs> <laughs> like you told me to look at my hands. I'm like I did. <laughs> I don't have hands. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, feet. Yeah, yeah. I've been having weird life, dreams, man. dude. It's all because of your hand trick. I'm like yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I I think that's a good idea. Go to lucidafterlife.ca, right? Dot ca. Yeah. Can they go to dot com? They can go to dot com. Look at you. I prefer redirect. Dot CA. Redirect. At, it's a proud Canadian, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I prefer. Right I prefer. I prefer, I prefer the car. The ka. Dot ka. Ha! Ladies and gentlemen. One less letter. One yeah. less letter. It's way more slang. Mm-hmm. And as always, if you're so inclined, we'd love it if you go ahead and follow us. You can go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes and Stitcher and pretty much anywhere else where fine podcasts are found. We're also SoundCloud. on SoundCloud. Jesus Christ. Do you hear they got a lifeline? Every week oh, we, really? we do a little SoundCloud update because we think they're going to collapse. Oh, really? And our RSS feed is based with SoundCloud. So every Who week. mailed SoundCloud out? I, <laughs> I didn't see this. Apparently, it was uh, it was an angel sweetheart oh. came in out of nowhere. I was like, "Hey, what are you losing? Two hundred million a year? I'm in. Give me, <laughs> give me, Jesus. give me that checkbook. I got this." I mean, someone keeps Reddit propped up like a bunch of like no one makes money at Reddit, so it's crazy. So I, I often wonder what the money analytics behind Reddit are because it's just it's yeah, predominant. It's fascinating. They have so much information. Uh, that being said, though, uh, if you guys go ahead and check us out, leave us a review. We really love that. Thank you so much again to our sponsors, Float House. Go ahead and use our podcast promo code II Podcast. Get 20% off your next float. It's fantastic. Nat Jack, I can honestly say this without a shred of any, any falsehood whatsoever. This has been one of my favorite episodes in a long time. And I, I think you have one of the most cool personalities. I seriously love hanging Thank with you, bro. Yeah, it was I really, really great. Do. It was a great time. Equal mentor. Always. And, uh, my uh, good friend Seamart, if people are so inclined to follow you online, how can they do so? Uh, I just wouldn't. It's not a thing that you can even really do. <laughs> Excellent. Any kind of like valid. Excellent. Anything. That segment's got legs, folks. Here we go. And uh, that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you all, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye. No, <laughs> live. Yeah. 
Live cam, action cam. Sweet. Yeah, bro. That was fun. That was fucking so fun. <laughs> I feel like I Thank you.